Neil Battaglia, SaxStation.com. This is the third episode of Amateur Saxophone Repairman. So this is the third time I'm doing a little video about this. And it's actually all about the same horn, about this con soprano from 1929. The last time I was talking about how you can use tape to temporarily fix some problems on the saxophone. So I had some tape right here, and I had some tape under a key right here. And between that time and right now, I also noticed that under my E flat key, there was maybe a little bit more space than I wanted. I noticed that actually on my tenor, the repairman that I go to when I need more work done more professionally, Gary Stotts, he had actually put an extra piece of cork down here. And I was having trouble transitioning between these two pinky keys. Basically, this was going down a little bit farther than I wanted, so it was hard to transition up. And actually, that was becoming a problem on Concierto de Aranjuez, which is actually kind of the melody that Chick Corea kind of had influence on for his song Spain. So I was wanting to go from the... I was trying to go from a low E flat to a low C sharp, which required rolling across this part. And I figured if this was up a little bit higher when it was pressed down, it'd make it easier. So I did something that I saw Gary Stotts do on my tenor, and he had actually, he, there was a piece of cork there, it wasn't completely missing, but he put an extra piece of cork there to basically give it a little bit more, a little bit more right there. So underneath here, there was a piece of cork that I put on myself actually. It was completely missing when I first got it. And then I put another little piece that was pretty thin, and that seems to make it easier to transition between these notes. There was some tape here, and actually I did something kind of similar. I put an extra piece of cork right here just to give it a little bit less height when this side palm key for the high D and everything above that is pressed. So that was what the tape was functioning as. It was basically not making this key go up as high, which basically brought the pitch down a little bit. But I replaced it with cork because I figured that's a little more permanent. The tape was actually doing the job, but it might fall off at some point. And at that point, you could just replace it with more tape. But I figured I could just replace it with cork and it might last a little longer. Similar situation over here. I had some tape underneath here where the cork had worn down a little bit. But what I did was I actually just put a really small, a really thin, rather, piece of cork underneath there and glued it in. Since I had the tape there, I had to remove the tape. And since tape is a little bit sticky, I actually used a, a Q-tip and some cloth, and I used a little bit of a solution called Gooby Gun, which kind of took that took care of that. Before I did that, it was sticking a little bit because there was a little bit of residue there from the tape. But basically, I got rid of that. I put on the new cork there, I put on a new cork here, and I put on a new cork here all at the same time. And then I left it out overnight to dry. And the glue that I used was Gorilla Glue. Um, Basically, it's a pretty strong glue, so I kind of have been using that on my saxophones. Eventually, sometimes it has it has worn down, and I think maybe actually on the on my tenor and my alto, I've got those rubber uh, risers for the palm keys, and my tenor is kind of has an interesting design. It's kind of not really typical, so I had to actually cut one uh, a little bit so it fit my saxophone and I'd use glue on that one. The other one I could just put it on and it was fine. But one of them required glue, and I remember that did actually fall off during a gig, either once or twice. So yeah, the, the glue seems to work pretty well. It is a little bit strong, so you wanna be pretty careful with it. You don't wanna stick your keys together and occasionally get a little bit on your hands, uh, which isn't a big deal. It'll come off after a few days. But yeah, you do wanna be pretty careful. It is a pretty powerful glue. So yeah, so basically I replaced the tape. I don't have any more tape on the saxophone. I got a little more new cork. And the cork I cut up with a knife. I'm trying to be pretty careful because you don't mess up your hands either. And then I, I basically try it. Sometimes it's not quite the right size. I put it in, I kind of press it down to see if it's too much or too little. And then I put the glue on and I put it in with my hands. So yeah, basically um, a, few, a few problems you can fix yourself with cork if you kind of know what you're doing. And actually, there was another problem here that didn't involve corks. It involved the low keys, so for the low B and the low B flat. There's actually a screw 
or not exactly a screw, it's like a rod that goes in between here, but it has an end that you can screw in and out. And I guess just over time, it kind of started to come out slowly. And I started to play it, and it was fine, and then it wasn't. I couldn't play a low B or B flat, basically because this piece right here had come up too far, and it was blocking these keys. And so I was kind of trying to figure out what was going on. I wasn't sure if like a rod was stuck or something, but eventually I kind of looked at there, and I figured out what exactly the notes that couldn't play were, and they were the low B and the low B flat. And both of those involve basically this connection right here. They both press that down. So I saw it and I basically just got a flathead, a small flathead screwdriver that I have. I got a little set that has a few different options. And I got, I think, maybe the biggest one out of that, which is still pretty small. But I just screwed it in a little bit and the problem seems to be okay at this point. It seems to have gone away. Um, I didn't want to screw it in too far. Occasionally you can screw something and it'll be an adjustment that is too much. You don't want to basically make something too tight or too loose. So if something's too light, maybe it doesn't function. If it's too loose, it also doesn't function. If it's really too loose, it might fall out. So basically I just screwed it down part of the way. It seems like it's got a pretty good amount of space now. Um, I imagine maybe in a few years that could happen again. I'm not sure exactly why it happens, but somehow that happened and I just screwed it back in. No, no glue, no cork, nothing required, just a screwdriver and being pretty careful with it. So yeah, sometimes you can fix these things yourself. Sometimes you want to take it to a repair guy. Um, I'll do a few things with the corks myself. I, I have a screwdriver. I can do that if I need to. I probably wouldn't try and replace a pad myself. Um, mostly it's the little pieces of cork, uh, screwing something in, adjusting something a tiny bit. But at the same time, I do try and be very careful with what I do. Sex alone, no!